In today's video, I want to share with you five activations that you can do to help activate the prophetic in your small groups. I often get asked, how do we grow others in the prophetic in a way that's accessible and easy? And so I thought I'd just put this together so that you can engage your small groups in a way that is not religious or weird or uncomfortable, but actually will genuinely add to the dynamic of your group and help build people up regardless of how familiar people People are to the prophetic ministry. Firstly, and this I kind of love because I do this in many of my classes around the prophetic. What you need to do is as a leader, give everyone a piece of paper and a pen and invite them to ask God for spontaneous thoughts that might pop into their head versus pictures, words that they then begin to write out on a piece of paper. Encourage them not to overanalyze, but to allow a free flow of heavenly thoughts that they begin to write out on a piece of paper. Tell them that you've chosen somebody specific in the group to receive a prophetic word that only you know about. As they write the word out, as they begin to write prophetic words, allow them to take a moment to really absorb it. Give them a specific amount of time. I normally do about one minute, one and a half minutes. And then I say stop. When they stop, I get them to reread that prophetic word and then announce to everyone that the person that I chose or that the leader chose is actually them. And this prophetic word is for themselves. Very often, in fact, more often than not, the word not only makes sense, but it encourages them. And often people have broken down weeping or broken out in joy as the presence of God has overwhelmed them. The reason is the anonymity means that they allow God's words and thoughts to pop into their head without ever trying to overanalyze it or trying to feel weirdly accountable for it. Very often in those moments, it breaks them through into some level of confidence to hear from God's word. The second thing I would do is get a few objects in the house, put it onto a table, encourage people to grab one and take one, and then break up in pairs and use the objects, so whether it's a cup, or a spoon, or whatever you have lying around in your house. We've often even used toys from our kids. Use that as a prop or as a platform to prophesy over the person in front of them. Here's an example of how this could work. I'm going to just grab an object in front of me. So I'm going to grab my cell phone and I'm going to use the cell phone to prophesy over this person. So here goes. What I would do is say to this person, hey, I'm, I picked your cell phone and the thing I'm reminded of as I picked up the cell phone is that I am due an upgrade within the next month. And I really feel like the Lord wants to encourage you, you're coming into a season of upgrades. And it might be that you felt like you've been really operating at a slow level and the things that you've needed to work things out has, has been so slow and kind of like the operating system on this phone, it's been delayed or slowed, hasn't worked itself out. And I feel like in this next season, the delays are going to stop. Again, this is a fun one. People love it and it changes uh, the atmosphere in your room. It actually brings a, a great sense of joy and excitement around the prophetic. Number three, I call this one the back-to-back -back prophecy. What I would do is get two chairs, put them back-to-back, -back, grab one person from the group to sit in that chair and to close their eyes. You might even need to make sure that their eyes are properly closed, that they're not engaging, and then silently choose someone from the group to come and sit behind that chair. Now, most often in the prophetic, the blocks to prophesying over people can be familiarity or fear, and this is going to help them break with familiarity. And as they sit back-to-back, -back, the one whose eyes are closed needs to ask God for images, thoughts, ideas, scriptures, that they then begin to speak out over the person that is back to back to them. And I found that as they do this, it breaks some of the fear around prophesying. And because there's no familiarity, it gets them to be slightly more bold and to prophesy over the person. There are lots of chuckles and giggles, particularly as people around the group begin to engage and realize that what this person is prophesying over someone they might know really well is actually super accurate and really insightful and will build them up and encourage them. Number four, get everyone to write out their names in a piece of paper, fold it up, put it in a bowl, mix it up real well, and make sure that everyone chooses a name out of that bowl. After that, communicate with your group. Tell them to take a whole week to meditate on this person's name and who they are and what they mean to that small group. 
then begin to pray. Ask God for specific words. Maybe help them by categorizing some areas. So ask God for words about their work. Ask God for a theme scripture for their life. Ask God for something for their family. You get to have fun by describing three different categories. I wouldn't do more than that. Otherwise, it gets a little bit exhausting and it causes people to feel a little bit nervous. Just three easy, encouraging categories that they can write. And then next week, have some time in your small group to talk about that and to encourage and to share that word with each other. And then number five, this is my last one. You as a leader or the leader of the group chooses one person that everyone is going to prophesy over. And what I would encourage here is a level of anonymity. So don't tell them who it is, but specifically choose a person that you know really needs encouragement that week. Get everyone to grab a piece of paper and write out a prophetic word. At the end, have everyone bless the person that you specifically chose with that prophetic word and provide some space for feedback. As you do these activations, remember that you want to provide a context of safety for the group. So tell everyone, we're not looking for what I call hatch, match, or dispatch prophecies. No births, no marriages, and no deaths. Don't prophesy anything too specific. Unless people have track records, that's not healthy. Don't use words like the Lord has told me. Use words like I sense or I feel. That helps people take all the pressure off and it gives them an easy in to prophesy. And lastly, is it encouraging? Is it scriptural? Does it build people up? Those are three easy principles that help provide safety for small group prophecy. Hey, I hope you get to try these out with your small group. Also, if you've got some ideas that have worked for you in helping activate the prophetic, why don't you share them in the comments below? And if you want to grow in your prophetic gift, why don't you go ahead and check out my free quiz that will help you discover how uniquely God speaks to you and how you can walk in His voice. I also have a prophetic lifestyle course called Vox Day, which means voice of God, with all of my best prophetic teachings in 12 videos videos which have been distilled to help you grow. The links are in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me and watching this video.